guys, my name is Kate Conway. I write the Undertow series, and I'm here today on Jackie's site, She Reads, She Blogs, to answer some questions about Undertow. Um, and right now I'm sitting in my office, which looks like a disaster, as it usually does. Um, those are Stormfront and Undertow copies that are going out to a bunch of book signings over the next two weeks, um, along with my whole line of books up there from different author friends and stuff I'm backlogged in reading. Um, my office is on the second floor of my home. I live on Cape Cod, about a mile from the Cape Cod Canal. It's a really windy day here. It's supposed to be pouring later, which is not so great because I have a book signing. Um, and my office uh, is a walkthrough, so it walks through to the rest of my house. Um, but anyway, Jackie sent me some really cool questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer them. Um, her first, see? questions. So her first question was, can you tell us a little bit about the premise of the Undertow series? Um, the idea behind Undertow originally came from um, World War II stories from my grandfather who was a teenager in Iwo Jima in the first landing. He was there for more than 26 days and um, he saw some horrific things. It was the worst, bloodiest battle the Marines had ever seen. And um, you know, when he used to talk about it, he was 17 when he was there, he never talked about the really graphic violence. I mean, once in a while he would, but most of the time he talked about being these idiot teenagers at war and how ridiculous they were half the time. And that even among the fighting, they came up for air in the form of humor and doing dumb things. Um, my family wanted me to write that story because I've been a journalist and a professional writer for a long time and I felt I couldn't write that story. So I started playing with the idea of having two enemies, not unlike the Americans and the Japanese. Um, the only difference was my grandfather never blamed the Japanese, which was huge back then. I mean, he was fighting for his life um, against the Japanese, and he never blamed them. He said they were just teenagers like us trying to survive. So I went with that idea. Um, the premise of Undertow is that a young girl inherits a... Um, home on Cape Cod, beautiful antique sea captain's home, which is actually a real house here on the Cape, and it used to be owned by a friend of mine. So that's why it's kind of so vivid. Um, I used to hang out in the house. And um, she moves here, and a couple of weird things start happening to her, and um, pretty soon she finds herself kind of being followed by a um, very good-looking kid that is new to the school as well. And before she knows it, she is not exactly human, and she's the last survivor of her race. And the boy, Rafe, who's following her around, knows something about her grandmother that was um, that disappeared in 1851. Now that grandmother, the house was hers, and then it went, and nobody lived in it for over 150 years, and it was maintained by this trust. And there are a ton of twists. In Undertow. It takes me a long time to plot all the twists in Undertow. And I know where the series is going and I know the end scene and where everything ends up. So the goal is that each additional book, the reader looks at it and goes, wait a minute, that was in the other book, but I didn't realize it was a hint of what was to come. Um, so it's, it's not a normal paranormal book where you just read for the sake of the characters. I mean, the characters are really fun to write for, but you have to really think about all the little tiny teeny weeny pieces that are inside. Um, I've only had one reader finally realize that Rafe's name is Fear spelled backwards. I mean, weird, like tiny, tiny, tiny clues um, are built throughout the book. Um, the So that's the, the basic, it's basically a story about semi-angelic terrorists. That's the whole story. And it's built on Cape Cod, so it's a little bit Jaws, and it's a little bit Breakfast Club, and it's a whole lot Goonies, and it's this ridiculous cast of characters that shouldn't work well together, but they, they're they forced to. Um, and Anna and Kean are probably two of my favorite characters to write for, and they're crazy too. Um, where did the inspiration for Undertow come from? came from my grandfather's war stories. Um, he, I remember he told me once that he was dug in with a friend and they were under fire. And at one point the friend actually turned to him and said, geez, you can get killed out here. 
No kid, but I mean, it. They were so ridiculous because at some point when you're faced with death, you kind of jettison your mind, and and some people just go for humor, and so there's a lot of humor in Undertow. There's moments of them running for their lives, and there's moments where you should be on the floor laughing as a reader. Um, what has been the biggest challenge in writing this story? Um, finding time. I work full-time as a bus driver as well. I do critique work for other writers. I do graphic work um, for a bunch of different places. So the covers of Undertow, um, the, the, the reissue cover, the blue cover and the gold cover, um, I actually did myself. Um, and then the original covers that had kids on it, I had a real cast of um, models from the Cape. They were real kids from Cape Cod we found on Facebook. They matched the characters. They had a great time becoming the characters. Um, people started recognizing them from their faces. Um, let me grab a book. Okay, so what happened was we realized we needed to reissue with a graphic cover. And so this is Undertow. You guys usually see it on Kindle. It's a big book. Um, it's 100,000 words. And the back... If you can see it, it's, well, it's backwards because, you know, Apple. Anyway, it's 408. That's the number of Isla's house. And it's her house number. And then this is Stormfront. Again, words are backwards. And um, that's supposed to be Isla and Rafe on his motorcycle. And the back is Big Tree. Um, and that's an even bigger book. The Cruel Summer book that's supposed to be out next, I laugh because I'm still writing it, um is about Kian and Anna, and that's the summer before Undertow comes out. Even though the series is meant to be read, Undertow, Stormfront, Cruel Summer, um, True North, which is the next big novel, and then probably Last Light is going to be the final book. So there's four big books in the series and one novella. Um, so the biggest challenge was finding time, and the other biggest challenge is keeping the storyline straight. So I have notes everywhere. That's half the reason my office looks the way it does. I have a team of five readers. They're beta readers. They're women that are spread all over the country. And they're very, very, very good at keeping me on track and making sure all the connections form. By the end of the series, the goal is that when you get to the last line of the last book, you're going to want to read the whole series again and realize everything you might have missed. Um, there is no scene in any of the books that's there for filler. There's always something hidden in every single scene. That was the stupidest idea ever because it takes me forever to do. Um, but it's really fun because some people, some people put the connections together. Um, and there's, there's hints to stuff to come. So in Undertow, yeah, well, if you haven't read Stormfront yet, you're going to realize there's a vault involved. But it's also mentioned in Undertow. And you got to see if you can figure out where. Um, what has let's see? Which character has been the most difficult to write, and why? Um, Rafe. Rafe is the toughest character to write. Um, so Undertow is written just from Isla's perspective, but I knew um, that I would always want to include Rafe's point of view, uh, starting with Stormfront. Rafe presents himself in one way to Isla in Undertow. And because you're reading just from Isla's perspective, you only see him through her eyes. Um, Rafe, however, is still a killer. Um, and he's this, technically he's an older man. And I love that contrast. Like, why would a 17 year old be falling for this ancient man. And, and I like that creepy factor. Some people in, you know, would say, this is disgusting. Why would this woman fall for the, this guy? You know, he looks 17, but he's totally not 17. And I liked that forbidden factor. That it's, you know, she's underage. And, and he's really old, and it's kind of weird. I loved that part of it. Um, that's deliberate. So he's tough to write for because I have to present him in, in two variations. Isla, how she presented it, is, is exactly who she is. Rafe, however, um, I have to show his flip side. And I think people, when they read, um, when they read Undertow, and especially when they start to read Stormfront, they forget 
that he is a bodyguard. So his sole job, as he sees it, because he self-assigned himself to protect her, um, his only job was to keep her safe. So if you ever, I fell back on, um, you know, bodyguard movies, and I fell back on Secret Service stuff, and really, they're over the top with their protection details. So some people are like, well, he's so controlling. Well, he's a bodyguard. Um, he's supposed to be a pain, but um, he's supposed to be irritating to some point in, in Stormfront until he he starts to realize she's stronger um, than he gives her credit for. And I like that idea. I like the idea that, that a guy um, starts to realize that the girl he loves is, is strong in her own right. She's always, she believes in herself. Um, it's Rafe believing her, her that, that takes more of a, a toll. Um, so he's tough to write for. Drives me crazy. I eat a lot of chocolate writing for him. Um, which character do you relate to most? Anna. I love Anna. Um, she's snarky and cruel summer. I laugh myself sick writing. Um, she's like a super feminist, which I consider myself a super feminist, which is, you know, why I like really strong female characters. Um, she's hilarious. She's very uh, multi-layered in her background, what she's gone through. Um, I teach character craft classes. That's kind of what I'm known for in Undertow is characters um, and ridiculously complicated plot lines. But um, Anna you see after she's damaged. That's how, you, that's how you meet her. In characters you either meet them as they are born, um, who they are, and, and they're not messed up yet, like Isla, or you meet them like Anna where she is already damaged, and you want to know why. So she's got, like, a million layers. I love writing for all the characters. MJ's hilarious. Um, Kian is a pain in the butt. Uh, Isla has this really fun, irreverent voice, and she takes nothing totally seriously. because She's like, well, we're screwed. Um, Wraith is the more serious one. He's almost based on a Mr. Knightley um, and a little bit of Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. That's how I always built him. He's, he's a complex dude. Um, and then as you read through Undertale, you realize there's a heck of a lot more characters involved. And each character has their own zodiac for me, so I write them correctly. They have their own background. They have, they, it, it takes forever to do the character plot lines. Um, I do not write shells of characters. I believe that each character should be able to step off the page. Um, if I do my job right, then people should be able to think they're real. Um, let's see. What else we got? How do you tackle writer's block? Any tips? I listen to music constantly. Um, loud. I'm that annoying person in line, you know, at the stoplight with their car and the windows are vibrating. Um, music. So music is big for me. Um, movies to an extent. But when I write, I don't write from first page to the last page. I write in scenes. Part of that is because of... Um, the storyline of Undertow is so complicated anyway that I have to make sure everything gets done. So basically I I write a single line um, on an index card and I get those all done first. Uh, so say there's Stormfront had a ton. Stormfront had like, I don't know, 45 scenes. Um, and it was pain because it was in two perspectives. Um, so I write those all down. So like in Undertow, I knew that I wanted Isla to have a throwdown with Nikki in the middle of the ice cream shop, the Milkway, which is a real ice cream shop here on the Cape, by the way. It's called Four Seats. Um, that's all I knew. I didn't even know how I was going to get them to the ice cream shop or why this was going to happen. I just write the things I want as scenes that I see my characters vividly for, and on the day that I feel like I've played the scene enough in my head that I know it well, I sit down and I write it. Which means I write fairly quickly when I'm not bothered. Um, but I'm bothered all the time. And then that's my tip. Don't write from the first page to the last page. Write what you want when you want. So Undertow was written all backwards. Um, 
like I wrote uh, the boardwalk scene um, first, and then I wrote Elizabeth's scene in third person um, in the beginning, which was tough to do because I was trying to stay in a certain tone for the mid 1800s. It was a pain. Um, Undertow used to be longer too. It used to be twenty thousand words longer, and I cut those. Um, that was painful. Let's see. Um, so don't write from the first page to the last. Listen to a lot of music. Um, write what you want when you feel the need to write it. Um, let's see. I understand that you work with high school students as a resident writer for their high school. What does that entail? Is it like being an English teacher or a creative writing teacher? It's like being someone that warps their minds. Um, so what happened was... Uh, Trying to think back. I was asked a couple of years ago. No, when Undertow first came out. So Undertow came out in October of 2013 and um, did really well because it's based on the Cape and the teenagers here are like, I know all these spots. I can do all this stuff. It's literally like a guidebook to Cape Cod. You could, you could go through Undertow and do everything. Even Dalka's shop, the Crimson Moon, used to be, huh, used to be, um, here on the Cape. It used to be owned by a coven of witches. It was called the Lavender Moon. It looked exactly like what's described, except I put it as part of Dalka's house. It was a freestanding shop. It's no longer there. Sad for you. Fun for me. Anyway, um, I got asked to teach class for the library, um, Sandwich Library, which is actually the town that the boardwalk really is in. Yes, that's a real place too. And, uh, it was packed and um people on the cape knew me as a journalist anyway um you know i wrote under my maiden name and i wrote under a couple different names but anyway um from there i started getting asked to do stuff inside the schools basically could come in and tell these kids how to take their stories and bring them to life and i'm crazy when i do it so it got really really popular and um Pretty soon, Sturgis West, which is a um, award-winning charter school here in Hyannis, it's one of the best in the country, asked me to come in on a regular basis and work with um, 10th graders, and I worked with the seniors on their um, college essays. So I come in once to twice a month um, for a cut, like a few days um, during the week, and the kids in the class get to come and they learn how to figure out their what if. So what if a tornado full of sharks came down, you know, Sharknado. Um, they figure out their what if, they start building their characters based on horoscopes, which I don't know of any writers besides me do. Um, it gives them a more vivid character and they start building their worlds out of the characters and, and mannerisms. And the goal is that they get to actually produce stuff that goes into Wattpad. So I run the storyrebels.com site. That's their site. Other schools, um, other students are now adding in their links. So it goes to Wattpad, DeviantArt, um, SoundCloud, all these different things. It, it, the idea is that I'm taking their imaginations and showing them how to put them down on paper or through music or whatever their facility is because it's really fun if the work part which is writing it and re-editing it 16 million times is not really the fun part um the goal is that they're able to write about 2,000 words um out of a scene out of their bigger book that is in their head um a scene that they see vividly and have it really well edited, really sharp. They understand the voice. So they understand the craft at the end. What their imagination told them earlier, now they have a physical representation of. And for the kids that are really driven, and we have some kids that are really driven. One girl writes fan fiction based on Undertow. It's like Isla and Rafe married and they have a kid. Um, it's really good. She, uh, she'll probably be part of it, but at the end of the school year, those kids that are really devoted to the writing aspect, they, they are putting out a, a lot of story and whatnot. They'll have a chance to have their 2,000 words bound into a book. Um, they will be part of an anthology of short stories from the Sturgis kids. 
So that's what I do. That's a writer in residence. Um, I didn't name that. They started calling me that, and I'm like, okay, I'll be a writer in residence. Because they didn't really have a name for this weirdo that would walk around the school. But the funny thing is, I go there now, and they're like, fist bump and high five, and they're like, hey, Miss Conway. Um, although now I get recognized in the mall, which was a little weird. Um, but anyway... So that's what I do for the high schools. I do that at multiple high schools. Mainly I'm doing it at Sturgis right, Sturgis right now because I'm so busy. Um, but yeah. Let's see. Um, how was working with teenagers... How has working with teenagers influenced your writing? So, um, I think teenagers influence my voice and what I want to produce in a book. Uh, I drive a 16-ton school bus filled with teenagers. Um, yeah, that was an unwise choice. But anyway, that's my regular day job. Um, actually, I just drove this morning and I had a meeting and then I ran back here and realized I needed to answer questions for Jackie. So they're awesome. I listen to them a lot. Um, I think that's why the voices are so clear. Um, in undertow and in stormfront and why you can almost read a line without knowing the he said she said whatever and know which character that is because everybody has a voice if you think about sitting down with your family to dinner you can almost hear in your head exactly how someone would talk how they would act what they would say it's automatic because you see them physically in writing you have to bring them to life from nothing um so that's how they influence me. Teenage writers, I can honestly say, are some of the most creative individuals I've ever worked with as writers. They're unjaded by life, and they don't get bogged down in the technicalities um, of a story. So, so their imagination is so vivid. Um, absolutely love their stuff. I would work with teenagers all the time. And over adult writers any day. Um, the stuff is brilliant. They have the passion behind it. They are not messed up by the industry. Um, I love working with teenagers. Let me see. Um, and I act like a teenager because that's why I write Undertow. I did jump from the bridge and freeze to death because of my teenage daughter. So I do have a teenager in the house. Um, Let's see. As an avid reader and an aspiring author, I often find myself walking a fine line between reality and fantasy. How do you find the balance? How do you make time to feed the creative beast and maintain a healthy family and social life? Ha! I don't have a social life. Um, no, I do, but... Okay, no, no, I really don't have a social life. I work constantly. Um, hmm. I think... My mother once said, my mother was a playwright, an actress, and also a journalist. So it kind of runs in the family. A crazy streak. Um, my mother once said that writers write. It's that, it's that simple. You have to find the time somewhere to write. So when I drive a field trip, or I uh, say I drive the field hockey team, they're going to be stuck somewhere for like three hours, um... And I'm going to be twiddling my thumbs. So I can either just sit there and read something, or I could take my laptop and write. And that's what I usually do. So I, I write whenever humanly possible. I'm writing in my head every time I drive. Um, Creativity-wise, I came from a family of storytellers. My father was hilarious. He would come up with these crazy, crazy stories. But my family was also generally nuts. My mother fell through the ceiling on Christmas. Who does that? Nobody nobody falls through the ceiling on Christmas. She was all right. But I got stuck on the roof because my father convinced me to go see um, Rose Kennedy's fireworks from our crappy roof in Hyannis, and you couldn't see the fireworks, and it was so dark outside, I was afraid to climb down. Um, so, you know, I don't take life that seriously anyway. Um, life throws you enough dark stuff that you just have to enjoy it. So the feeding the beast part is really, really simple. Um, letting your mind wander all the time is really, really simple. I can see anything and make a story out of it. Um, I was asked to do a story on the fly for Sturgis and build it on them because Undertow is built on the real Barnstable High School, which is also on Cape Cod. Um, you're getting a trend here that everything is real, sort of, in Undertow. But... Um, 
they asked, Sturgis asked me to write a story about their students. And I did a really fast one off the top of my head because they had a rivalry with East. So there's Sturgis West that I work at and there's Sturgis East that wants me to come and work at. And, um, which I will if I have time. And there's kind of this rivalry between the two of them. And I knew some of the history of the two schools. East was built first. It's in Main Street. You can leave and go have, you know, lunch at all these different restaurants. They're considered the cooler place to be. Um, and West is newer. And they're farther down Main Street. So there's this rivalry. I, I just went top of my head and I pulled from um, an old movie called Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And I said something akin to a flower and this peace treaty and it all goes to hell. Um, everything can be a story and you should write down your ideas in little writing pads. Like, oh my God, this is such a mess. Little writing pads like this. Um, keep them on the side of your bed. Keep them in your car. If you're like me, you have 60 of them and you can't find them. And, you know, write down your ideas and then just start playing with them, turning them a million times in your head and, and eventually you'll have the whole story. Um, uh, Undertow wasn't written on a deadline, huh. but Stormfront was, and all the other ones are now too. So, so that's a real motivator to get it done. Um, but it also puts me at odds a lot with, um, balancing my family. I have two children, I have a husband, I have two dogs, I have a bird. Um, and I have a job, and, and it gets very exhausting after a while. I've learned this year to take some time off here and there from my bus driving job, which I used to never do. I thought I had to do everything, and, and you just can't. You literally will lose your mind, um, and you don't want to be short-tempered with your family. So my family, though, does help me out. They try to take my six-year-old every once in a while and take him out for a whole day, and that whole day, I'll just park myself here in my PJs and write like crazy. Because um, it doesn't count unless you keep producing stuff. And it really should be good stuff. You don't want to produce junk. Um, so that's kind of the, the creative feeding the beast thing. And plus that music. Oh my gosh. I spend so much on iTunes. It's scary. Um, YA. So the last question is, YA and NA fiction has been the target of heavy criticism lately. What do you think of this? And how do you feel about it? The kicker is, I didn't know that we were under fire. Um, I think anything that's popular comes under criticism. So, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of video games. When they first came out, um, we're always under criticism. Uh, new television shows are too edgy. Um, some books shouldn't be read. I mean, I often find the, the biggest um, arguments made against things are made by people who secretly really like them. Does that make sense? Like the, the, the biggest people that are the most homophobic actually has something in the back of their mind that makes them worry that they might, they might be gay. Um, you, I, I don't worry about it. Uh, I'm in a position where I write for my fans because I'm, I'm self-published. So, um, because I wrote for so many, so many years for editors as a journalist, I would write the story they wanted me to write in the way they wanted me to write it. Um, Undertow was the first time I ever had something in my head that I believed I knew my audience well enough. Um, and I wanted to, I guess, maintain control of it. Um, I wanted a chance to write the story I wanted to write in the way I wanted to write it. So Undertow is, is self-published, meaning that I don't write for an editor right now. I write for, well, I write for you guys. Um, in that respect, it's a, it's a different mindset. So when I'm writing, I'm not thinking, what does my editor want? I'm thinking, what do my fans want? Um, I, don't, I don't even think what I want half the time. I'm like, okay, these people are invested in these characters for these reasons. What's the natural evolution of the character? Um, and how would my fans react? I'm always true to the characters. So, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a weird vibe in Undertow. So 
it kind of feels contemporary, like n no paranormal stuff, but then I throw you a curveball every once in a while. And it's meant to be that because it's a character-driven story. So you, you read it for the characters. Yeah, there's a crazy twisty line in there as well, but I write character stories. Um, I was the same way as a journalist. I wrote um, human interest stories. So in, in that respect, I really don't care if some you know, major blogger says YA and NA is crap. Um, my fans say they love it, and I'm writing for them. I'm not writing for the blogger that thinks it's crap. He won't read it anyway. Um, so yeah, I write for I write for my fans. I don't write for the money. Um, it ain't a lot. I write for that teenager or that woman because I have a lot of adult readers. Um, and guys, which surprised me. I write for them, those people that are willing to maybe jump from the bridge. Those people that may be willing to stand up to a bully. Um, those people that want to shut off the TV and lose themselves entirely in a different world. Um, those are the people I wrote for. They've always been the people I write for. Anyway, I think I've answered everything. Um, if you haven't read it yet, I would tell you that there's a lot of hidden things in Undertow, and you won't realize they're there until you get farther into the other books. Stormfront gives you some insight. Um, Cruel Summer is going to throw some curveballs into the characters. Um, I love Cruel Summer. I'm laughing myself sick writing it. Um... There's a lot of things, there's so much in the book that a lot of people forget pieces of the book and where stuff came from. And uh, as they read on farther, they're going to be, dude, I didn't realize that came from this person and I didn't even think about that, but that's right, that would have to have done this, that, this, that. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I am loving writing it for you. Um, and I will, even when it's done, I'll continue to be a crazy storyteller because I always have stuff going on up here. Anyway, I will talk to you later. If you need to find me, I'm Cape Cod Scribe, and um, I always respond to my fans. I'm also on Facebook. Find me on Facebook. I'm lonely. Very lonely. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Jackie.